Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One minute. Folks. How's it going? Good. How are you? Well, let's start up front with uh, we booked two hours for this meeting and we promise we won't take that long. Is that it? <laughs> let's uh, let's just establish that right now for this opening meeting. Let's give folks here another minute or so. I have people kind of trickling in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. There were 19 invitations this Saturday. Some of that marks that. All right. Well, it's a little past 1.30, so in the interest of respecting everyone's time, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with this work group focused on uh, committee structure issues related to our CMAC and carbon reduction programs. But for the most part, since this is the initial meeting of this group, uh, probably should take a minute to go around and do uh, introductions of everybody. There are three of us here in the Mark office, uh, in this room here at, at Mark. I'm Mark Hansen, Principal Planner. Um, and with me is Ron Acapul, our Director of Transportation and Environment. And Martin Riverola, our assistant director of transportation and land use. I think I got that right. Yeah. So, so uh, when I call your name, just go ahead and uh, unmute and introduce yourself, and we'll we'll go from there. So I'll, I'm just going to take them as in the, in the order that they show up on my screen. So Allison Smith. Okay, Allison Smith, KDOT, and I am the carbon reduction program manager for my agency. Thanks, Allison. Uh, Kelly Gilbert. Kelly, you're on mute. Got to unmute myself, folks. Uh, Kelly Gilbert, Executive Director at Metropolitan Energy Center. Um, was there anything else that you wanted us to say there, Mark? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, Nate Baldwin. Hi, I'm Nate Baldwin, City Engineer for Olathe. Nicholas Bassanetto. Yeah, hi, I'm Nate's counterpart. I'm the city engineer at KCMO. Patrick Truba. Patrick Truba, I'm Mark Staff. I'm the active transportation planner on Mark Staff and the um, active transportation programming committee liaison. Patty Hildebrand. Good afternoon. I'm Patty Hildebrand. I'm the director of public works in Harrisonville, Missouri, and I'm the chair of STP. Missouri side. Dick uh, Gerald. See the video come on. There we go. I'm Dick Gerald. I'm with the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority, uh, Deputy CEO. Sherry McIntyre. I'm Sherry McIntyre, Director of Public Works for the City of Liberty, Missouri. 
Westminder. Uh, Westminder, Platte County, and I enjoy Mr. Truba's angry cat meme on his desk. <laughs> Dwayne Hand. Hey, I cannot turn on my camera. Hi, uh, this is Zhuang Yan from MoDOT. I'm a district planning manager at the district office, Kansas City. Great, welcome. And we have one more coming in. Zhu Wood from North Kansas City has joined us as well. We'll, we'll let her uh, get set up and get going here. So I'm going to pull a presentation we have uh, for you today, kind of walking walking through things. So give me one second to get that going. All right. So here is our agenda for today. Uh, we started with kind of a welcome and introductions. We'll go over uh, kind of the work group uh, purpose and scope of work for this particular group that we've put together. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the kind of the current structure issues that have uh, brought us together. And Mark's staff has identified a handful of kind of potential program structure uh, options for you, as well as uh, providing some time uh, for you to potentially identify um, uh, potential program structures that we, we've not thought of. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about future meeting schedule, and then we will adjourn for the day. Uh, some of you may have heard Ron's uh, comment earlier that while we have two hours booked for this particular meeting, we are going to do our best to not use uh, two hours on a Friday afternoon. So now let's go ahead and get started. So work group purpose and scope. So essentially this group is together to develop a recommendation for or recommendations uh, for TTPC uh, that evaluates our committee modify or evaluate, hang on, we're getting ahead of ourselves, evaluates a committee mo potential committee modifications to address uh, kind of the oversight and programming structure for the carbon reduction program. Uh, the CMAC program has some kind of management uh, things about it that are unique to CMAC and also some programming responsibilities that are a little bit unique to CMAC. We'll talk about those and kind of the, uh, the issues that those are causing at this point. But we'll talk about potential modifications to uh, the CMAC buckets. Most of you may know CMAC is the only one of our funding streams where the, the funds are distributed out to various project types and then programmed from that point on. And so we'll talk about that. It's been a, a topic of conversation over the years, a number of different times, uh, and there have been modifications to it here and there, but we'll talk about uh, kind of potential modifications to the CMAC buckets. Uh, we're hoping to do a report and potential vote at the May meeting of TTPC. So uh, we're, we're kind of on a, a accelerated timeline here. Programming work is underway already, and we would like to get uh, some decisions made about uh, how we're going to work these two programs in particular uh, moving forward. So I'm not exactly sure why my screen is keeps bouncing back and forth, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it today. So any questions about uh, kind of this... Um, the, the kind of the purpose and, and scope of why we put this uh, work group together. Now, we have done kind of a little bit of a roadshow uh, talking about the need to do this. So most of you may have heard, heard that at February meetings of our uh, Active Transportation Programming Committee. Uh, the STP committees talked about it at their meetings in February. And I believe we also mentioned it TTPC back in February. Uh, that we would be getting this group together and working through these issues. So uh, unless there are other, any comments or concerns about the purpose and scope, we'll go ahead and bounce through to the next slide. Uh, some of the current structure issues uh, that are going on that kind of have precipitated us pulling this work group together. Uh, kind of the biggest one is probably that there is no uh, kind of ongoing or permanent committee oversight for the carbon reduction program at this point. Uh, and at this point, there is also no committee or work group assigned uh, programming responsibilities for the carbon reduction program. So uh, given that we are uh, on deadline day for the phase one component of our suballocated funding application, uh, those are two questions we really need to get uh, addressed 
as soon as possible. Uh, CMAC is a, another story. Its funding and structure is uh, decentralized among multiple committees. Uh, you can see there, Air Quality Forum has responsibility for alternative fuel and outreach and other uh, in other kinds of programs related to those, uh, such as diesel retrofit. And they get 11% of CMAC dollars that are available. Active Transportation Programming handles our bicycle and pedestrian program. Uh, they get 15% allocated to them for that. Uh, the Kansas and Missouri STP Priorities Committees, uh, they get the traffic flow component at 37% of funds. And then Transit takes uh, the remaining 37%. And it has been, uh, it's a little bit of a question mark there as well as uh, kind of the regional transit committee uh, has not been uh, meeting regularly in the past year. So uh, some questions there that we need to, to work on as well. Uh, so the absence of uh, oversight group and the decentralization of the CMAC program uh, is definitely having an impact on program management. This is particularly uh, noticeable in Missouri, where uh, MoDOT and the, has kind of placed some new uh, obligation goals, as they would like to call them, uh, on the programs. And, and most of you in the Missouri committees have heard this information a number of different times, so you know what's going on. Uh, essentially, uh, we need to be managing all four of the main funding programs here at MARC, CMAC, carbon reduction, the surface transportation block grant, and transportation alternatives. Uh, the allocation in a given year, we need to add, obligate at least anywhere between 110 and 120 percent of that allocation each year. Uh, they don't manage it on a program by program basis. It's managed as the group of four. And so not having uh, centralized uh, oversight of CMAC and, and carbon reduction uh, makes kind of uh, overall program management become much more difficult as there is no, no place to go to uh, when things drop off the program due to schedule changes or uh, running into problems with Buy America or in the case of carbon reduction, simply being a very new program that's taking a bit of time uh, to get programmed as well as then those projects taking a bit of time to actually get going and moving towards obligations. So not having a place uh, to make decisions about those programs is becoming uh, more problematic as we move forward. Uh, that decentralization and kind of bucket format in the CMAC program also leads to, uh, in a lot of cases, we see kind of leftover amounts of funding in certain categories where we don't have enough applications uh, to utilize all of the funding that may be in a, available in a particular bucket. Uh, we tend to see this with the alternative fuel category uh, where there is money left over and then there is a kind of question about how to deal with those leftover amounts. That process is uh, kind of not really well defined. We've been using an ad hoc work group uh, made up of committee chairs from the, the committees that program CMAC dollars uh, to kind of deal with that. But, uh, Oftentimes that leads us to funding projects that have lower scores and emissions reductions because uh, what we find is that uh, we're funding projects because there are dollars available in a category and there are projects available in a category. Whereas if you had all of them together, all the different categories together, you might pick a different mix of, of projects to fund uh, that would have higher scores and, and greater emissions reductions and be uh, potentially more cost effective at what they're doing. Uh, as I mentioned, with programming underway, uh, timely decision making about uh, some of these questions is definitely needed. And again, uh, looking to take at least a report out to TTPC at their main meeting about what's uh, what's underway. We certainly uh, would most definitely like to be done uh, by June's TTPC meeting in order to be uh, everything in place, ready to go for phase two of the application. So those are kind of the the ongoing issues. Mark, if I could just uh, sure. chime in a little bit. I, I we've just spent a lot of time talking about CMAC. I think if we were going to triage the the key issues, the biggest one I think that we're concerned about is the lack of a of a standing committee to do the carbon reduction funds. We felt that this was an opportune time to talk about CMAC because the eligibility for both 
carbon reduction and CMAC are so close. They're very, very similar programs. They're not identical. They're, they're focused on, on different emissions reductions, but the overall uh, eligibility of projects and the kind of evaluation that we do for them is really similar. Um, so I, I think we're, we've got several issues on the table. The, the key one is how do we, how do we uh, communicate how we're uh, disposing of and managing the carbon reduction program in the future? Um, as, you, as we go through this, we'll also probably have something to say about the, um, the uh, SDBG set-aside funds or the old TAP fund projects as well, because there's some overlap with both eligibilities with both the carbon reduction and CMAC programs too. Before we move on, anybody have any questions about any of any of this, not understand one of these issues or need additional information about them? Hey, Mark, um, it's Wes. Um, yeah. I'm just looking at the federal register or whatever. On the carbon, did I remember reading right that half is supposed to go to mode choice? Or did I just see that is what the call was? I was trying to figure out because... Ultimately, you know, if you're talking about where that funding winds up, you know, if half of it's supposed to go to non-motorized transportation, then it makes sense just to roll it up underneath the ATPC committee. And then that way we don't wind up with separate committees. And then you're not, you know, somebody applies on one program, you fund it, and then some committee doesn't fund the other half, and then we can't do it. Or, you know, kind of some of the problems we've had. Mm -hmm. So, Wes, that... that um, that's not a, a requirement in the federal rules about the program. That was a, a, a target that the uh, work group that we had last fall that was doing the initial programming had developed for that. that call. Okay. And Thank it, you. Yeah. So there, there is some flexibility about that. So I think the federal guidelines are that you could transfer up to, I, I think the state can transfer up to 50% of the CR to like CMAC or STP or things like that. I'm unfamiliar with the CRP. Um, I haven't been involved with um, with a, an evaluation um, or discussion on that before. And so I'm wondering if you guys can give a little bit of background at high level. Um, sure. This is, these, this is a new program that was established with the bipartisan infrastructure law. It's the carbon reduction program. And so it's uh, it's basically focused on funding projects at the same similar 80-20 um, uh, federal participation rate as all as all the other sub allocated uh, programs, with a with a um, particular goal of reducing transportation on road transportation emissions, and so uh, for uh, yeah carbon dioxide and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, greenhouse gas emissions basically. So and it's, it's a federal it's, highway program. Yeah, it's a federal highway program. Okay. All right, thank you. And uh, it, it, it looks almost identical to CMAC, other than CMAC is focused on reducing um, criteria pollutants for ozone and, and particulate matter uh, instead of instead of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And Kelly, it's Allison at CADA. I did drop the link to the, the fact sheet from Federal Highway in the chat. Um, and I could also do the guidance if you want. The guidance is only about 16 pages, but the fact sheet will give you some good info. All right, thanks, Allison. Great. All right, so we've come up with three options to talk about today, and certainly uh, we don't uh, we don't corner the market on coming up with ideas about these kinds of things. And so, if there are others that come to you as we talk about these, as we move through them, uh, please do share them as we as we get there. We will we will certainly provide an opportunity for you all to, to add some feedback into this. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at option A, which would essentially uh, kind of just formalize the carbon reduction program work group that was used the last time we programmed funds for this, this program, which that wrapped up in uh, early fall of 2023, if I remember correctly, and was the first round of carbon reduction program uh, that we had done. Uh, this group would kind of essentially turn into a carbon reduction program committee and would provide oversight of the carbon reduction program on an ongoing basis. It would include 
uh, expertise in bicycle pedestrian, traffic flow, transit, alternative fuels, uh, greenhouse gas reduction uh, projects, uh, the kind of the components of the working group that we that we pulled together the last time we did this. Uh, one of the big drawbacks to this particular one, uh, given the, the significant overlap between the project eligibilities and the project sponsor types that we would see uh, between carbon reduction and CMAC is this uh, this particular option doesn't address any of the CMAC structural issues we talked about and essentially becomes uh, one more committee uh, that you all need to participate in or can participate in and uh, another committee for us here at MARC uh, to staff, which uh, will happily will happily do that, but uh, it is another, another commitment uh, for committee participation uh, kind of all the way around. And so that is, that is one kind of con to that uh, formalization of this particular work group uh, that we that we see here. Uh, Ron Martin, anything to add? So the yeah, the work that would be involved in the setting this up, we really didn't have a defined roles and responsibilities for the uh, CRP work group. It was put together really quickly, um, and and there was some uh, after the fact some concern about how the members of that work group were selected and. So we would we would need a process to kind of re up it. So this is this isn't exactly as it would not be as simple as just retaining the membership of that work group from the fall. We would still need work to uh, to uh, kind of rationalize the how people get a seat on the committee um, and and formalize its relationship to the other programming uh, processes. So, but but uh, there's a framework to start with there. Why don't, you, why don't we go through all three and then we can discuss the, the, the pros and cons. Sounds good. Option B, uh, we would create a new committee for that would oversee both the CMAC and carbon reduction programs. Again, uh, including the expertise in the various um, eligible project types, the elimination or the adjustment of the CMAC programming buckets could be on the table uh, here as well. Uh, it also uh, still does carry a little bit of, of duplication, uh, less probably than, than option A, but it is still another committee that would be created in order to, uh, to deal with these programs. And I think it's uh, it kind of carries the same uh, components or issues that Ron mentioned related to option A. And not a, not a huge difference here other than uh, both CMAC and carbon reduction under the same umbrella. And then last but not least, we have option C, uh, which is kind of a reorganization of the active transportation programming committee. Uh, this committee then would be uh, tasked with the oversight of the Transportation Alternatives Program or the STBG uh, set-aside program. Uh, it would have the CMAC program as well as the Carbon Reduction Program. Uh, this would not create a new committee. It would be kind of the least duplicative of the options, uh, but it does require some work here. There is work to be done in broadening the membership. Uh, we would need to review and, and edit and revise the roles and responsibilities document for that committee to uh, kind of address all of these new uh, responsibilities there. Uh, that broadened membership would need to start including uh, expertise or representatives of traffic flow issues, transit, alternative fuels, and, and greenhouse gas reductions. Uh, and there would potentially be the need to uh, increase the meeting frequency of that group. They tip, they right now work on a quarterly schedule that may need to change. Uh, unsure how much more frequency might be needed for that particular group, but there is always a potential uh, for that. But again, um, it's an existing committee just with new, uh, new membership and uh, new responsibilities. So not creation of a new committee. And again, the elimination or the adjustment of the CMAC uh, buckets could be could be optional with this particular uh, 
reorganization of the active transportation programming committee as well. And so those are our three options. Anybody have any thoughts on a question. three options? Um, a couple, couple questions, actually. This is Kelly. Sure. Um, why, why ATPC as opposed to some of the other committees? Um, and that's less one. Um, and maybe that's the main one. It seems to me like Air Quality Forum has. Oh, the other question was who who currently manages programming for traffic flow? Is that just the TTPC or is that another committee? No, that's, that's the STP committees. Yeah, the, yeah, the that's Kansas STP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm. Yeah. So, I guess the other question then is is why why is ATPC the only committee that you're offering up as to to reorganize to encompass this? Fair question. Um, I think we started with it because it, it's it's programming. Uh, funds right now that are dedicated to, you know, one of the one of the eligible um, activities under the both carbon reduction and CMAC fund with the active transportation projects, and it and it is it's a relatively new committee, but it is one that does kind of have a primary responsibility as a as a programming committee, unlike the air quality forum, which is um, really more of a policy level committee, kind of on a par with TTPC. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, the next slide here is other options for us to consider. So that's the, 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 our, our, our uh, we went to this one first because it's got part of the um, role already that I think uh, relates to, to a big part of the carbon reduction program as well as the CMAC program. And Ron, if I could also add <clears throat> another reason why what we, we thought at first that the ATPC would be, would be a good option is because not, not only not only is there some overlap with the work they already do, it's a programming committee which currently programs funds for bicycle pedestrian projects, which which CMAC and and, and carbon reduction also uh, are eligible project elements for. So there is overlap between those. Uh, but also, if you look at the membership, at the current membership of the ATPC, uh, it does currently include. Uh, maybe not wearing those hats right now, but currently it does include some expertise in, in, in transit and traffic flow. It has it has some uh, some uh, folks from the transit uh, sort of interest groups and stuff. So there there is overlap in many ways already as as in, in their in their programming role in the types of projects that they that they program and in the membership of the committees right now. There's still work that needs to be done, but there's a lot of that has already been sort of naturally done already. Okay, thank you. And Nick asked about the amount of funding. The program allocations for uh, CMAC, for CMAC uh, generally it's fairly consistent between the two states, uh, roughly 2.8 to 2.9 million per year uh, for each state, which then of course goes through uh, a bit of uh, kind of work to uh, the Mark Board of Directors takes. Uh, some funding off of the top that reduces the total amount, but when you uh, break it down, the 37% uh, generally is about 1.7 to $1.9 million uh, total available for uh, traffic flow and transit, and then it gets progressively less. Uh, bike ped at 15% is you know 700 some odd thousand uh, programming. So that's how that would work out on that, uh, Karen or Ryan, do you have kind of the, the scale of the carbon reduction program in each state? Yeah, give me one second. I can get that pulled up. I think it's 8.5 million. Um, I'm sorry, just give me one moment. Can I ask a quick question about the eligibility area for each of those funding sources? I know, for instance, CMAC is restricted to the air quality boundaries. Do the other programs have similar restrictions? No, the other programs are eligible anywhere in the uh, metropolitan planning area. 
So putting them under one committee, they have to be cognizant of CMAX restrictions that are not as broad geographically as the others. That's true. That's a good, that's a good point. And I so, see you, you have another question about whether to clarify whether we're talking about one committee for each state or one for the urban area. Right now, Active Transportation uh, Committee and the work group that we had for carbon reduction last fall were both um, region wide. So they they dealt with both Kansas and Missouri funding. These the, the all of these programs come to the region through Federal Highway, through KDOT and MoDOT, and so there there are there there is a Kansas allocation and a Missouri allocation, and we uh, you know fund from Missouri projects out of Missouri funding and Kansas projects out of Kansas funding. They don't really cross the state line. I know that ATA and Mark have both applied for uh, some regional projects in the past, but they've also maintained a separate Kansas and Missouri share for, for those projects. So we were proposing this as a uh, as a single region-wide committee, but the, the we, we have a separate committee for the STP funds in Kansas than in Missouri as well. So that's, that's hey Ron, that's, Ron, it's yeah. Wes. As far Dick, as far as that that by state thing on the committee, I mean we we used to do the TA TA, you know TAP. It used to be separated by state, and I kind of like to combine because, you know, we have four community members on that committee. Um, it's pretty geographically balanced, and it's kind of I think it's helped us a lot at you know a holistic implementation of non motorized travel. You know, with just having you know, the people, when, when you when we get up to divvy the money on Kansas or Missouri, where each side has been respectively kind of quiet to the other side to let them figure out. But it is nice to have some different perspectives or kind of a almost like a mom or dad sitting around watching while the kids are fighting over the candy on the middle of the floor. Um, I do like the idea of just one committee in the ATPC on the option C because, um, you know, the the TAP funding is is substantially larger than the CMAC, uh, which is why I think we started rolling it up underneath there, because as I mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, one project may apply for both pots or, or one or the other, or one may score well in the, you know, it's always been a problem of trying to spread projects, good projects around. And then also too, um, you know, from a true non-motorized network and maybe i just i'm regurgitating this because i've just done a bunch of grants but you know we have like a we have a 32 mile loop that we're trying to implement here in southern platte county and we've already got 20 20 of those 32 miles done in the last 15 years and a lot of it's just come from you know these these tap grants and so i think from an implementation standpoint you know the people the way we've been implementing our carbon free transportation has been through the ATPC committee over the years. And we do, you know, we have community uh, folks. I can't remember doc, is it Dr. Nurberger from the Sierra clubs, our chair. Yes. Um, and so I don't know, it's, it's, I think it's worked real well the last six or seven years since we've combined them, but I'll let anybody else opine one way or the other. This I'll, go, oh, go ahead. I'll go back to Nicholas's question. The carbon reduction program uh, this particular go around of it is a little bit different as we're kind of playing catch up and trying to program uh, additional years to catch up to the other programs so that everybody would be on the same uh, kind of two-year cycle. But in general, uh, the, the numbers work out to be uh, kind of on a straight allocation basis of about $2 million a year in Kansas and about $3 million a year uh, in Missouri. So is that they're, for they're, so they're pretty consistent in their eligibilities with CMAC, and they're also pretty consistent in the amount of funding that's available as well. This is Allison at KDOT. I just wonder um, if reorganizing active transportation, there's many other eligibilities under CRP other than um, TA type non motorized projects. So um, if we bring in representatives um, that are more familiar with um, traffic flow, um, ITS, that sort of thing. If then we take the focus of active transportation away from that committee um, in order to have other experts talking about the other eligibilities, if that makes sense, um, that we kind of lose or water down the focus of act active transportation committee. 
I could you put on the screen? Of, yeah. Could you kick up one of the other options just for comparative purposes? Sure. So I, I support having as few committees as possible. We have a tough time staffing committees as it is, but there is some, it's, it's a good concept brought up there by Allison, I think. So here's, here's B, which was essentially new committees being a new committee established that would handle uh, the entirety of CMAC and carbon reduction. So, so one committee for the two programs. And then option A was uh, just essentially creating or formalizing the work group that was used uh, last time for carbon reduction into a carbon reduction program uh, committee or standing work group, if you will, uh, to do uh, just that particular program and leave CMAC uh, as it is. And of course, there are other options that you may all have thought of that we're not uh, we're not coming up with. And so please please do share those if you have ideas about them. Sure. Right. Mark, this is this is Nate Baldwin. Hey, um, and I apologize. I had to step aside for a minute, so maybe we talked about this. But option B, it, I'm I'm with I think it was Richard earlier that I you know not in favor necessarily of you know new committees or a committee for everything right but in this sense it it does make sense with this it, other than trying to pigeonhole it somewhere how often would you envision this committee meeting i mean to, to me it doesn't seem like it would have to meet that often that's a, that's a good question Nate. i think probably initially you know much like the standing committees that are already in existence when when programming is happening, there are more frequent meetings, right? I, 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 right. But on an ongoing basis, I suspect this would be uh, a quarterly meeting, at least to, to start with, and then go from there. But uh, you know, the quarterly meeting allows kind of that, that kind of ongoing program management. If there are issues, projects that are being delayed or whatever, there are, are opportunities then to kind of remedy that as much as possible on that kind of a schedule. I think what we've seen with the carbon reduction programming that we did last fall, um, shortly after we added those projects to the TIP, we started to get a lot of questions about potential scope modifications. Um, and, and so we really need a, a place to, to work those through so that you know staff isn't making this, those types of committee decisions. Um, okay. and, and so that that's one of the reasons we, we, we want a longer term Kind of oversight committee for that program. Um, those those same issues do come up, probably a little less frequency since CMAC is a is a pretty established program. But uh, we've all been kind of uh, learning as we go on some of the ins and outs of carbon reduction. Well, all right, thanks. With North Kansas City. Sorry, <laughs> oh, it's cutting the wrong time. Um. I do agree with what Wes Mender kind of mentioned earlier. I feel like the um, let's look at option C for reorganizing the ATPC. I feel like the ATPC has a, a good amount of goal of people that has the expertise in a lot of projects that we talk about uh, for CMAC or CRP that might be eligible for. Um, and I do know know that if this option move forward, that there will be a reorganizing component attached to it. So if we are concerned um, about CRP not having enough expertise, we might consider maybe adding more members to it um, that has some sort of expertise in the environmental component. Or um, I feel like this can really largely kind of uh, limit the amount of re duplication work that we have and can maximize out um, maybe good projects like Wes kind of mentioned that could be considered for different pots of money. Um, so that's my two cents. I, I had a, a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I think CMAC and, and CR, the traditional problem with CMAC has been that it's supposed to be for congestion, congestion mitigation and air quality. Uh, you know, uh, and I think that's why you, you have it into buckets, traffic flow, regional transit get the biggest part active in air quality. Uh, you know, uh, I you have three funding programs, TA, 
CMAC, and now CR, and you have three committees. You have active, STP, and regional transit. Maybe one option is just to, you know, give all CMAC to whatever. Regional traffic, get all TA to ATC and give all CR to STP. That way we don't have more committees. There's no splitting of the money. Uh, and, you know, it's something like that. Uh, my, my biggest thing has been with CMAC and, and all my experience has been like, it, it often gets used to build recreational trails and nothing wrong against recreational trails, but they're, they're really for recreation. People use them, you know, you don't really get that congestion mitigation and air quality because people are just not using it for commuting and things like that. So uh, I think if you put all this money into the active transportation, that committee is more towards I feel like modes that are not really taking a lot of traffic versus, you know, if I have 15,000 cars going through an intersection every day and I get money to modernize that intersection, that's congestion mitigation and air quality, much more than, you know, a, a recreational trail. But that's just my point of view. Thank you. Sherry got a question in the chat about why we, why we recommended active transportation said the bike bed committee. Um, I, I think we started with that because active transportation is already a programming committee. Uh, we view the bike, bike ped committee as more of a planning um, committee that doesn't really have currently have the responsibility for 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 history of programming uh, funds. So that that's the distinction. I think it's a fair question about why we have a separate committee for this personal opinion. <laughs> why we have a separate bike ped and active transportation uh, committee, but if that's the that's the structure we've we've uh, we've got right now at Mark. We have planning committees, highway goods movement, um, bike bed, uh, mm -hmm. transit, and we have programming committees like the STP and and uh, and, and active transportation committees. Thanks, Pat. Uh, um, go ahead, we Pat. have a lot of standing committees, and I'm with everybody else about getting another committee. But when you're going through a programming round having everybody at the table focused on the specific requirements for the prioritization of projects and how the scoring works, I think is really important. So I, I just don't think that I just went through the, the list of members of HEPC and I'm like, I don't think they, ex the existing have some of the skill sets that would be necessary to program some of these. So if we did say we're gonna have HEPC do these, then I think we need to add committee members that are specific to whether it's air quality or um, transportation or whatever those things are. Yes. But Sorry. for, yeah, so, but what my preference would be is, and I don't know who mentioned it earlier, that it's really kind of how often would they meet. I kind of would like to have another committee that only meets to program these funds and then once they're programmed and selected, then based on the type of project they are, they go to the standing committees to track them. So if their overlay projects are gonna go to STP because they're roadway, if they're a trail that have been, and, uh, or a uh, white pet of some nature, they go to active transportation. If it's a traffic flow, it comes to STP. Um, I agree they have to be tracked over time. And I think we need to know um, what their requirements are, but years ago, um, but we did, did have a CMAC committee and it worked really well because when there was a pot that had, that was undersubscribed, we were able to see all of the projects and say, hey, we don't need to fund this project that's scoring a 20 just because it's a bike ped and we need more bike ped, we need to spend more bike ped money. There's a project over here on transit that's scoring an 80, we need to move some money over there. And we had those conversations. So that would be my recommendation. Yeah, and this is Kelly. I was gonna speak up and say, um, I think we can eliminate A, which was the standalone committee, and also agree that CMAC and CRP need to be in the same committee. But I also agree with Patty, and I think it was, um, sorry, I'm not saying everybody's names. Um, I don't remember her name from earlier, who said that, that a new committee is probably the better option. I'm I'm leaning in that direction. I, I initially thought that I wasn't going to, to be honest, but I I think it makes more sense because that committee would be focused on 
the programs and they would understand how the programs work and 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 what the differences between CRP and CMAC are because that's their specialty and that's why they're meeting and um I'm in favor of a of a a new committee that that programs both CMAC and CRP. Hey, that would also be in favor of what Kelly just said. And and I guess I would I would too. I, I think it's more option B that I'm I'm thinking about. Um, to me, the CMAC and CRP both have strong air quality objectives. And I think that is different than the non-motorized transportation objectives, which are not strictly about air quality, but CMAC and CRP seems to have a lot of overlap and in, in consistency. I know it's not just air quality on CMAC, there is congestion mitigation, but I, I like the fact that there's so much continuity between those two programs. And I, I'm okay with the new committee because I think it takes, certainly on CMAC, it takes some of the responsibility that's already elsewhere and puts it into this committee. The only issue with two committees is, again, if you're applying for a project in both pots, um, the flexibility and funding and, oh, well, that committee will fund it and that committee doesn't fund it and this other committee doesn't fund it. And so you might have a, a legitimate project or two that kind of slips through. I, I guess that's what's nice about having less committees but more people on the committees is you have a little more flexibility when you get down to the um, – you know, programming of money for, you know, regional, regional things that actually implement, you know, real infrastructure. Are you, are you, Wes, are you referencing perhaps a, a, a bike pet uh, project, which may be eligible for CMAC, CRP and TA? Yeah, I, I think my, my whole philosophy is, you know, if you build either, you know, some sidewalks or on street bike lane or a, a trail that also is on a, you know, on the regional bike plan that Mark did that's supposed to be for mode shift. Um, you know, that's an asset that's going to be there, you know, for potentially 50 years versus funding. You know, I mean, if you're if you're electrifying a fleet, you should be doing that anyway. So, um, you know, if you buy an electric fleet or a vehicle, you know, the, the lifespan of that is, you know, five to 10 years. And so your hard infrastructure projects give you a longer bang for your buck. Um, it's kind of always been my approach on that. So that's kind of where I'm aligning Wes, on I, that. Wes, I, I agree to some degree, but we already have that challenge with, you know, because what you were just mentioning with the bike pad project being eligible for TA, CMAC, and CR, it's also eligible for STP. So no matter what we do, unless we say we're going to do all programming under one committee, which is a huge shift and probably fairly unmanageable, we're always going to have that. And I think it's the committee's responsibility to kind of, I think staff does a really good job of giving us the lists that are in other committees that have been submitted and are under consideration in other committees. And I think we've done a fairly good job of communicating, but like you say, some of those larger regional ones, um, yeah, you gotta come together. And I wasn't proposing two separate committees. I think one committee could probably do the work and then disband until it's our year and a half. Mark, are you looking for a decision today on either option B or option C? I think we've all agreed that option A is kind of off the plate. I think we were we were looking for discussion today. Um, okay. We were also looking to see if there was an option D that, that folks wanted to investigate further. But yeah, our, our hope today was to you know discuss these options, see if there was it, 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 get get input about them. Um, also, you know, ask what additional information you need from the staff. To be able to develop a recommendation for uh, for for TTPC, and we we didn't think we'd knock this out in one meeting. Uh, we hope we knock it out in two to three. Um, two would be even better. Hey, Ron, from a yeah. timing perspective, from a timing perspective, though, you know, with reasonable progress uh, in the the deadlines, and and just I hear it's getting better, but there still is MoDOT LPA process to. Yeah. To maneuver through. Um, I mean, realistically, 
is there any way there, there's not going to be any way to kind of get this all structured in time to, you know, allocate in September or so to have a December tip amendment to start working on it. Is there? Well, I, I, no, I think we, we, we feel fairly confident that if we can make a, a decision by um, May or, or June, that we would have time to stand up a committee and get them ready to go when the um, scored phase two ap uh, technical applications are, are ready for them to discuss. So it, ideally, they'd have a, um, you know, some time to sort of discuss their ground rules and how they're going to, you know, you know, procedures they're going to work off of. But the scoring criteria is, is, is set now. Um, we think the biggest challenges will be probably identifying the roster and getting the mem membership in place for if we are standing up one or more uh, new committees to work on this. But we, we think it's doable. We, we, uh, the, the, the heavy lifting over um, reviewing and selecting projects will be happening uh, probably starting in late July or August. And staff will be reviewing uh, projects and probably through the month of August and into September. So generally, we by the time we've done kind of applicant review of that project evaluation that was done by staff and, and get things ready to go, we're generally late September, early October by the time we're ready to actually start uh, working with committees to, to get to funding allocation. So there is a little bit of time yet here, uh, but, but you're right, there is a lot of work to be done uh, between now and then. I had a question about CMAC and how it's how it's done today. Uh, is it evaluated by each committee based on the category? Yes. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Right. So each each of the four commit or technically five, uh, there are four buckets evaluated by five different committees. Uh, traffic flow projects are evaluated by the Kansas and Missouri SDP committees. Uh, the transit component uh, had been uh, kind of being done by the regional transit coordinating council technical team, I think is the, the, the full council. The, the full council. Uh, Air Quality Forum had been doing alternative fuel and outreach other projects, and then active transportation was looking at the bicycle pedestrian uh, components. Uh, the scoring for CMAC is fairly consistent across all of those. In general, it's heavily weighted to the amount of em emissions being reduced and uh, how cost effective a project is at reducing those emissions. That's, I believe, 70 percent of the of the project score. And then there are some uh, kind of land use considerations, uh, activity center kind of components to it, as well as kind of some safety or other uh, category specific uh, concerns related to them uh, in a component related to VMT reduction as well. So. Well, I, I do sort of like the idea, I think maybe Patty alluded to this as well, is perhaps having all the CMAC in one place to look at across those categories as, there, as the projects are evaluated. Um, there's, there's benefits there, I believe, as long as you have enough expertise to look at it that way. Well, and Dick, to, to build on that, this is Sherry, um, you know, if you're going to do that, go back into having a unified CMAC committee, then you just do the CPC you know, the carbon reduction and, and, and put it together as one big committee. Um, oh, like I said, maybe it gets back into, as was alluded to, is if you do that, then you know, that committee, again, it meets, meets quarterly or it meets, you know, gets the funding stuff recommended and then they just meet, say, you know, first of the year or in March or something to see where we are on reasonable progress on projects. Yeah, it's a C committee. Any funding source that begins with C goes to that committee. <laughs> so the, the implication of that then would be that the active transportation committee would effectively become a, uh, a TAP committee and the STP committees, which are called STP committees, would be just doing STP funds. So we have one, uh, a, a committee that would be programming two pots of funding and then two or three committees that each are programming one pot of funding. I, I have no problem with that. The question is then with the, the C committee, um, do they continue? Do they have other work to do throughout the year, years, or do they disband and the response? 
responsibility for tracking the projects that are awarded goes to the other committees based on project type? I, I think um, that's a good question. I think my initial reaction would be it, it's if we've got the committee that is, is making the programming recommendations, most of the tracking work is involving uh, projects that are having schedule challenges or scope change challenges. Um, if, if a project drops off, a, a committee that can then make a recommendation about how to reallocate the money among the different types of projects that, that are eligible for that pot would be beneficial. So I guess my bias would be, I'd prefer to have the committee that programs the funds also be responsible for um, managing changes to the program over time uh, as, well, they, as they occur. Well, then they meet quarterly like the um, ATPC yeah. Yeah. does. Right. And then you need that, to make I sure that, that you invite, you make sure, you know, for the members who, people who have those projects, those people need to make sure they're invited to those quarterly meetings as well. Right. Does SMART staff have a preference? Um, I think we, honestly, to be to be frank, I think we were um, pretty attracted to the modify the active transportation committee option uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that they're already they already exist and have some history of of programming funds. So for this round, at least, standing up a new committee that you know, new members that may or may not have been through the programming process before that, that to Wes's earlier point could be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, and, and frankly, we, we like the idea of, of fewer, <laughs> fewer programming committees, but um, uh, no, I think that we, uh, we, we will, we're staff, we'll do what the, what the group is recommending. I, I don't think we had a strong preference there, but I think from a, you know, um, just for, for those two issues, I think we were kind of leaning towards that option. Right. Uh, what if we what if we tried options, see see how it worked, and then just because again, I'm concerned about the time and being able to get all this together and being able to do the allocation, the tip amendment, and move move forward with reasonable progress with with does, timelines. Does the new committee need to be like a call for everybody that may want to ever be interested, or can we? to like the modified CMAC committee we had before where we pulled from the other committees. So we have the modal committee representatives as well as the programming committee representatives. Mm -hmm. An interim committee for a, 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 year, a single year. I would prefer yeah. that than modified ATP, but but I've never been involved with the active transportation committee, so. You should- you I've should been on every committee group. at Mark. Yeah, I've been on every committee at Mark, so. <laughs> Um, they all have their pros and cons. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe for today, I think this has been really this has been really helpful discussion. It seems like that the the two options on the table that there's there are two options on the table. Um, but what I might recommend is if we can come back with a little bit more definition about how we might tackle each one of them. Uh, I think there's been. There was quite a lot of questions about um, what it would mean if we were expanding the membership of the Active Transportation Committee, and I think, um, and then, and then the what you just mentioned, uh, I, I think um, Patty, you were the one that suggested the possibility of drawing committee members for this uh, Option B committee uh, from from existing ones. I think I think we could uh, we could play with that a little bit. Yeah, I, I just want to speak up and say that um, Nick's point about um, modifying the AT, you know, the Active Transportation Committee is that, I mean, is those committee members, those current committee members are, you know, biased toward, not because they necessarily have a bias, maybe they do, probably they do because they're on the committee, but I mean, they're just going to be biased toward the um, the active transportation applications uh, potentially in discussions. And so that's one reason why I would prefer to stand up a new committee um, personally. So I just thought I would, I don't know that anybody else 
interacted with that comment that he made, but I just wanted to support that comment. Um, one other thing I wanted to, to call out, Ron and Mark, is that um, I noticed that you didn't offer <laughs> to just roll the CRP uh, programming into the same process that CMAC is currently using. <laughs> I noticed that you didn't offer that. No. <laughs> so, seems like Mark very strongly wants to go away from that. So um, anyway. We, 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 we've, uh... I think we've been a little concerned for really 2001 when the when the uh, pots were established for CMAC. It's it's been it's been a little bit of a stumbling block, honestly, having having those kind of uh, rigid uh, categories for the for that pot of funding. And if if nothing else, we feel like it's probably worth if we're going to retain pots that we probably ought to review the programming history recently and some of the. Uh, projects that we have funded and and kind of cost benefit uh, bang for the buck as was described earlier for the for the different ones um, we've we've been over the years it, Kelly you know this been getting less and less uh, subscription to the al alternative fuel programs out of CMAC those are harder projects to deliver um, and some of them are much more oversubscribed the transit pod in particular has been been really oversubscribed. And I think to this question here about um, on item four about additional information needed, I think th that topic that of, of, of whether or not we keep the pots or we adjust the pots for CMAC, we'd like your help on that. Although if we're going to create a, a, a standing committee for it, we may have them finalize it, but we'd like some additional thought from this group about how we might tackle that question. Yeah, I think analysis would be great to to find out, you know, in our region where where's the emissions are coming from, what is, you know, what's, you know, what areas, what 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 modes, and you know, what what gives us the best bang for the buck for reducing those. I did have a question. If we do either B or C, does the Air Quality Forum lose all its programming money, and what are ramifications of any? Um, I think we would still. This is kind of a longstanding practice, we would still need to take the CMAC recommendations through the Air Quality Forum. For they, Air Quality Forum and TTPC co-manage that pot of funding. Have you taken the scores um, from, let's say, the last round of funding of all the CMAC projects and you compared them against each other? How is the parity? Can pull that together. I don't. I don't think we haven't. We haven't really specifically looked at that, but we've got the information to be able to do it. Most of the recent analysis that I've been asked to do about those programs are kind of per capita by county, <laughs> how they've been distributed. I've had a couple of requests for that lately. Oh, I mean. Ron, one example I could see with a, pro a problem with ATPC, um, like electric vehicle charging and other all fuels um, is an eligible CRP project. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't want to say they would be unfair or unequal or anything, but um, with that committee's focus being away from motorized transportation and um, perhaps electric vehicle charging, um, would they have kind of a, a fair, get a fair shake, like those type of projects um, with a committee that's so um, focused on non-motorized as they should be because of their, you know, their title and intent, but, um, those other categories, would they stand as much of a programming chance? I don't, it's hard to predict. I think we would we would really need to make sure that we had folks that were well versed in those types of projects added to the mix and, and that could that could uh, represent them. And that'd be true for for transit projects as well. Yeah. Actually, we, I'm sorry, we have we have transit representation on the active transportation committee now, but. Yeah, that 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 area of expertise about um, charging infrastructure and alternative fuels is something that would would have to get 
uh, added to the Active Transportation Committee. And they, we need yeah. to find folks that would be uh, able to be vocal and and uh, and explain the benefits of those types of projects. Uh, yeah, and, and I just pulled. Oh, I just but, pulled EV as an example. It could be yeah, um, yeah. roundabouts, or it could be um, ITS improvements, or something like that. So, and, and also one of the things that we did um, as we were prepping for for this meeting is we did we did take a look at the current membership and roster of the TPC, and, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, the, their focus has been on active uh, transportation uh, projects. The membership though, of the group, there is a lot of overlap with other programming committees. Many of you here are on ATPC and also happen to sit on uh, on on the STP committees or others. So there there is overlap. Yeah, but but yeah, it's very yeah. definitely an issue that we would we would have to address. I do want to point out something that I noticed from looking at just who's on this call. It just so happens to be that the co-chairs of the ATPC. We spent a lot of time talking about the ATPC being potentially reorganized. They're not here. I mean, they were invited, and for they may not have been able to attend. Uh, so they're not here. I just wanted to note that that we'll, we will have to get them caught up at some point. I have one other thought on um, reorganization of the ATPC. It sounds like really it would become a programming committee for active transportation, alternative fields, and outreach, transit, and uh, traffic flow, not just an ATPC anymore. It would essentially become a programming committee for CMAC and CRPC. It would just cease to exist as AT as the Active Transportation Committee is what it sounds like to me. Yeah, I think that it'd be worth considering renaming it if it, if that if that was the direction we went. All right, so. So you could just go to flip a coin and move on because <laughs> no, we're going to make you come we're back all over the talk place. about this some more before we get a decision. <laughs> You're going to tell us. <laughs> okay, so uh, this group was agreeable to a Friday afternoon meeting. I know that's not everybody's favorite that kind of thing, but generally most of us have some availability on Friday afternoons. Does that still work for everyone? If hey Mark, were, it yeah. it does it does as long as it's not not a passive aggressive thing on a on a day that uh, we have uh, grants due. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about that. So, uh, amen to that one. But at least it, it it's the the less technical part of of the application. So, but you have asked for some analysis to do. Uh, so we we were looking either Friday April nineteenth or the twenty sixth. Sixth, do, does anybody have a real preference for that? 26th is better for me. Mm -hmm. I've already got some stuff on the 19th. Talking about the afternoon, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can make either afternoon work. Anybody strongly opposed to either the 19th or the 26th? I'm fine. I guess I'm opposed to the 26th because of a grant I'm kind of with. <laughs> That's fine. Whichever. Okay. All right. We will, we will <laughs> take a look at kind of the information that, uh, that has been discussed here and see how quickly we can turn around some analysis on some of those things. And I think that will probably drive uh, our determination about whether the whether the 19th or the 26th uh, would Just would be the one. Uh, my initial my initial concern uh, is that uh, there's some pretty good analysis required in some of that uh, in pulling together some information. So the 26th is more appealing to me strictly from that standpoint. But if folks are uh, not available, that's not helpful either, and we will do our best to make the 19th work. So. Just to clarify Kelly's question in your response, option C would become basically get rid of Active Transportation Committee, make it a committee that does CMAX, CR, and TAP, and then select all new members? I don't think we've thought that through. That's not okay. that's not exactly what we were proposing. 
Um, that would be a that'd be a, a later discussion. I think our what we were envisioning was adding members rather than than recycling the whole roster. But that's that's something we probably should discuss. Okay, just thank you. Well, and Ron, didn't we do this like what was it four years ago where we got the the programming committees actually made the final decision, but you sent the certain projects to the other. Mark committees. Uh, I remember I thought we had something down at the uh, Anita Gorman Center or something where, uh, you know, like transit yes, projects. We were getting, to, yeah, we were getting yeah, their we were input. Getting input from all yeah. the modal committees and the modal committees, and, and they were kind of ranking it. So, but I think I think if we're if we're leaning towards a C, you know, like John Newberger is the chair. He's also on air quality, but I think if you added, you know, another. 10 folks from some of the other committees, I think you've got, you, you still have to, you know how this town works, right? Like we, there's a certain culture and, and the way a group works and, and to, to do it right in the middle of a programming thing, I think would cause a lot of, there's time that there's, you know, there's, as a work group, you got to get to have some time as a culture to figure out how you all kind of each other thinks and how you work together. So I think if you were to expand and add, I think that's a better basis for um you know kind of not rocking the boat but at the same time making the changes that we need to make to um you know make sure we keep pushing good projects out i'm hearing that one of the things then that you, you all might want to see is uh maybe not with names attached to them but the types of what a what a potential roster in terms of organizational or or um experience uh we would see in a in an option b committee or or a revised uh option c committee that in, to, to think this through how, how different those would would need to look. I, I think that's a pretty good strategy for an approach on for the next meeting at least to kind of move the needle so we're not talking all over the place well and right now the programming committees receive um, there's a place on each programming committee for a representative from the modal committees. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, to some degree, is there an opportunity for someone from the, the STP committees or whatever we're going to call them to go to that programming committee so that we have information? I'm just always looking for information. That certainly be a possibility, yeah. The, the other issue is that ATPC committee roster. Are there people on there that are outside the uh, the attainment area? Yeah, that's also true for the STP committees um, uh, and the CMAC that they pro program. So that's we would have to be you know very clear about you know CMAC eligibility is different than carbon reduction eligibility in terms of geography, um, and that may. With the recent changes in the proposed uh, particulate matter standard and and what we've seen in the last couple of summers with that with the ozone area violations it's very possible that that geography would change in the future not this year and probably not not in 2026 but perhaps as early as 2028 One more comment. Yeah. Sounds like we have there was a comment from Ellie who can make the 26th work. So it sounds like April 26th will be our next meeting. I will get a calendar invitation out and we will get working on preparing some of the some of this information you've requested for the next meeting on the 26th. Hey, Mark, before we close, I just want to tell you compared to what the whoever on your on your guys side that has done the GIS and the forms, the uh, entering entering stuff in is a million times better than it was a decade ago. So I just I just oh, wanted yeah. to say, I wanted to say thank you before we got out of here. We'll Major applause. I agree with Wes. It was much easier. Yeah, it's been quiet here. We've not heard a whole lot of folks with issues with it. So thank you for, for uh, sharing that. Yeah. Yep. 
No, we will definitely pass that along. It's been a, it's been a painful process on our end to get it there, but you know. That's yeah, why we big hats, so big hats off to your IT guys. So yep. It works for you all and, and as easy as possible for you all to do what you need to do with it. So um, send them some pizza that. or donuts. <laughs> and Mark staff, if I can toss in another kudos, I have a much deeper appreciation for all the programming work and, and development of the process. Now that I've done it for a program at KDOT, you guys do a wonderful job and I really appreciate um, and used your all of your work um, on ours as well as um, a good model. So um, I just really applaud what you guys do because I've been through it now and I know how hard it is. Yeah, so thanks, we have, we have wonderful staff and wonderful partners that we work with uh, to make sure we get through all this uh, uh, all this together. So well, thanks, thank you all for your time on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Yes. We, we gave you 45 minutes back, so go out and enjoy it. Have a good weekend. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.